welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. Hey, I want to start this episode with a shout out to my friend from Greece. Uh, his name is Moschotelis, and he's probably, I'm guessing, maybe the only uh, mushroom farmer in Greece. Uh, he's got his own little local startup going, but uh, check out his channel and his videos that he's doing. I'm trying to teach him some things that uh, he doesn't know and get him started in his own home business in Greece and expanding and selling to some restaurants and whatnot. So again, check out the links to his videos and his channel. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to make spore syringes. You see here, here is a, uh, a large uh, syringe, which you can purchase these at a variety of different mushroom uh, supplies. I'll post some links in the video description. I have here a shot glass full of water. You can use tap water or distilled water. I have my pressure cooker and I have a jar with one of my lids that you see here that I have the, the three quarter inch holes cut. Now I could have liquid culture or grain in this jar that we could inoculate. So it doesn't really matter. You see here I have a circle of old Tyvek envelope that I've cut out from this right here. Obviously you can find these envelopes at a post office. And you see the Tyvek is a material by DuPont that's very tough, doesn't tear easily, but it allows a gas exchange to pass but does not allow any microbes to pass through it, so it makes an excellent filter for our uses. Now, you can also use uh, coffee filters, I've heard. I've never have, but you know, if people are having success, then obviously it works. So, you see I've cut this uh, piece of Tyvek to the little larger than the inside diameter of this jar lid, and I've got it in there and used my fingers to press on the inside to conform it. Want to make sure that when you screw it on, that none of the, the edges flip over, and you're not having it all completely over the opening. So I'll put that on there, and what we'll do is we'll use a syringe to inoculate through one of these holes in the jar. So I will cover that with foil. You see here in this pressure cooker I already have a couple other jars of liquid culture that I'm doing to expand my king oysters this week. I got a mug sitting in there so when I wrap my shot glass full of water it has something to sit in. It won't tip over. Then I'm going to wrap these uh, syringes in foil as well. You just put those right on there on top. So this will get pressure cooked for a total of 50 minutes at 15 PSI. We'll sterilize everything and get it ready to inoculate. My pressure cooker is cooled off and I'm in my lab. So I'm going to Open the cooker up, get my hands some, some alcohol first, to keep everything clean. And this is going to be the method that requires the uh, lab hood in a nice clean environment. And again, this will give you better results, but you'll still get good results with the other method. Go ahead and take out the syringe, my jar, my shot glass. I've already inoculated my liquid cultures. All right. You go ahead and take the uh, foil off this. Now, 
there's a property of spores that if you actually add too many spores to your water solution, it'll cause problems because the way in which the spores germinate and interact with each other, if you have uh, mold spores uh, close together, because even though you're making spore prints with the mushrooms, you're gonna have mold spores, bacterial spores, all kinds of other spores in the mix, but it's just that the, there's gonna be such a high volume percentage of the uh, oyster mushroom spores compared to everything else that they'll be able to take over but they do so much better when the spores are dispersed evenly and there's not a large density of mold spores here or a large density of oyster, oyster mushroom spores here they just seem to uh, take over the food better and beat out the mold so I'm going to open up these uh, syringes here. Now you always want to store your spore prints in a uh, Ziploc bag of some sort because the, the thing that kills them the easiest is them drying out, especially if it's warm. So you don't want them in a uh, hot dry room. I don't even recommend putting them in the freezer or the refrigerator because that'll dry it out as well. Just at a, a cool dark place. Now, you won't be able to see the print on this foil because of the reflection. And the oyster mushroom spores are white. That's just a light print. But anywhere you, you can see them concentrated is very noticeable. So I have one tool over here that is called an inoculation loop. You see it's just a, a simple handle and some thin wire that goes out to a tiny little loop of metal at the end. It's really thin and sturdy so you can heat it up red hot, let it cool, and then it, it can be used to uh, grab the spores off the surface of the foil. <coughs> so we have our alcohol lamp. Let me go ahead and light it up. Make sure there's no other alcohol by it. It's always a, a good rule to keep flammable things away from your fire. So we're just going to get the wire a little bit hot around to kill off any initial stuff. And then we'll heat it up. And you'll see it won't take long at all. It turns a uh, cherry red. It'll also cool off very quickly as well. Okay, that should be good. Now, like I said, you don't need to take a big heaping uh, pile of spores on your loop. All you want to do is just a little, and that catches just enough. Just a slight coating. And then swirl it around in your water. Now, obviously, you can't see the spores in the water. You could if you used a larger amount, but there are billions, if not trillions, of spores floating around there now. So, we'll go ahead. If you, if you accidentally get any water on your print, because I just did, you never want to have your print moist. I actually made a mistake uh, earlier this week where I was printing a lot of mushrooms on foil for a friend, getting the spores really thick. Opened it up out of the uh, Ziploc bag and there was actually green mold growing on the oyster mushroom spores. So uh, it can happen. Go ahead and put this fire out. So we have one standard size shot glass of water. Now we're inoculated with spores. I'm going to take uh, one of my syringes. Make sure the uh, never touching the needle or anything like that. Put the, the cap up towards the flow hood so it stays clean. And then you're just going to draw in a full syringe. You might get some air bubbles at the start. That's all right. You just want to turn it upside down and give it a kick and spit it out. 
And there you have it, a uh, completely full syringe. It's about uh, 12 milliliters in there. And that'll be enough to inoculate um, at least six jars because you, a, a good inoculation of jars is about two milliliters. And like I showed you in the prior video, any uh, culture or liquid culture jar or grain jar, all you got to do is open the top. And put your two cc's in there. That easy. Now let's go over the uh, the simple way to do this. That it doesn't require the flow hood or the alcohol lamp or even a inoculation loop for that matter. So, oh, well now, I don't want to turn my light off. There we go. Probably hear me a little better. So we have our spore print again. I'm gonna use a piece of wire. This is just an 18 gauge wire and uh, Ideally, you want to use some pliers to loop it around, but I'm just going to bend it around with my hands. Now, you want to use a stiff piece of wire, probably actually even thinner than this because this is 18 gauge, and it probably still won't get cherry hot no matter how much fire I put to it. But ideally, you want to get your loop as uh, hot as you can. So, I'm going to take my lighter and heat it up. Now a butane lighter isn't going to get as much heat as fast as using a, uh, an alcohol lamp, but it definitely works. And yeah, I'm not gonna. Eh. Yeah, I'm not gonna get a red hot, but just a tiny, a little tiny bit of glue. Now you can quickly quench it off in the water. Again, you don't want to get it too wet because you don't want to get your print wet. that cool and dry off just a little bit. All right. And then again, you're going to go over your spores just a little bit. Just a tiny amount in there. And if you say this is a fresh shot glass, you're gonna get, again, swirl it around. Now you technically probably don't even need to use pressure cook sterilized water, you can probably get by using boiled water, where you boil it just for about 20 minutes. And that should probably be actually sufficient enough, but you know, again, if you have access to a pressure cooker, you definitely want to use it. So now we're done with our print. We won't completely close it because I'm going to dry it out a little bit.